Unreal Studio 4.22 continues to add new capabilities and improvements to Datasmith and the translation of scenes from 3ds Max and CAD applications. We've continued to refine the workflow with improvements to visual fidelity, performance, stability, and usability. For 3ds Max, we've added new support for object transform animation. Now position, rotation, and scale can be included in the Datasmith exported from 3ds Max. Datasmith saves the object animations for each scene into a new level sequence, which it creates in your content browser next to the scene's other assets. You can use this level sequence to control the playback of your animation in the Unreal Editor and when you run your project. Datasmith now exports vertex colors from 3ds Max objects and makes those vertex colors available on the static mesh asset it creates in the Unreal Engine. When you design new material graphs in the Unreal Editor, you can use the Vertex Color node to retrieve these vertex colors and use them to achieve special visual effects. Changes have been made to how we handle Force Pack Pro and Rail Clone assets, with performance improvements to the export time, import time, viewport draw calls, and memory usage. The usability has also been improved with less clutter in the World Outliner by using one actor per Force Pack Pro object with subcomponents. We've added a new Datasmith Attributes modifier to 3ds Max, which lets you tag objects to be treated in specific ways on export. You can specify a custom light map UV channel or custom collision mesh to be used, or indicate that an object should be replaced with a bounding box on export. Additionally, technical information about the 3ds Max scene structure is now exported as actor tags and can be used for automated data prep workflows. We continue to polish the Revit exporter previously introduced as early access in Unreal Studio. We've added support for linked Revit models and maintained the scene hierarchy, providing a better match of the Revit data in Unreal Studio. You can now non-destructively re-import elements of the scene that have changed, retaining any downstream changes that you've made. In this example, we're re-importing the linked Revit file and maintaining the material changes set up in Unreal. Rhino files are now tessellated using the same method as other CAD files, so you can control the accuracy and leverage the re-import workflows. Additionally, we've added the ability to stitch neighboring NURB surfaces during tessellation. In this example, we're going to re-import the seat base, change the stitching type to heel, and modify the tessellation to increase the polygon count. It's worth noting that we also improved the performance of importing large scenes. The GLTF importer has been rewritten to use the Datasmith interface, which provides a non-destructive re-import workflow and exposes Python bindings. In addition, it now supports GLTF 2.0 with support for object animation, PBR materials, as well as directional, point, and spotlights through the KHR Lights Punctual Extension. We're continuing to improve the MDL AXF importer for a better user experience. The importer now includes support for displacement and has faster iterations thanks to a new non-destructive re-import workflow. Names and groups of material properties are now correctly imported from the MDL annotations, streamlining what's presented to the users. In this example, we can easily work with the properly named and organized material properties. In Unreal Studio 4.22, Datasmith continues to improve with better performance and enhanced functionality providing you with the tools necessary to use 3ds Max and CAD data in your enterprise workflows.